Hi everybody, Ryan Horn from ryanstechtips.com. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the student experience of Google Classroom, specifically how vastly different the student experience of Google Classroom is depending on if that student's using a Chromebook, laptop, or computer compared to a mobile version, like if the student was using it on a phone or a tablet. It is vastly different. Let's dig in and take a look how different it really is. Okay, so we're logged in as a student on a computer in Google Classroom. We're going to specifically look at using assignments and working with assignments in Google Classroom, how different that view is compared when you compare computer to mobile. We're going to open up this assignment on our computer and click View Assignment at the bottom. And over here on the right, it says Your Work. The teacher has made a copy of a document for each student that they would like them to work with. Now, if this isn't here, the student can always press the Add or Create button to turn in work this way with these tools. But we're going to take a look at this copy this teacher has made for each student. And when a student clicks this button, it opens it up on a computer. There's a text box here that the teacher has made, and it's this easy for the student to start typing their response in. And then when the student's done with their work, all they have to do is press the Turn In button here to turn that in with their teacher. It's that easy. So this is what it looks like on the computer side. Now let's contrast that with how different it looks on the mobile side. So I'm going to demonstrate this on my iPad. We're going to open up Google Classroom and the classwork page looks very similar. But when we work with assignments specifically, let's see how different this looks. We're going to tap open the Industrial Revolution assignment here. Ah, first of all, there is no Your Work section over here on the right. So the first problem is students might say, I can't even find that copy you sent me. Well, they're going to have to look down here on their mobile device on the bottom of their screen where it says your work, and they're going to use the up arrow to find any attachments the teacher might have made a copy. And here it is. You'll see that Google slide icon. So the student taps this to open it up. But here's the thing. This is not in Google Slides format. This is a PDF. In fact, when the student clicks on it, they can't type anything at all. It's frozen. It's a viewable, printable PDF. Google Classroom on the mobile device, no matter if you have a doc or a sheet or a slides, always opens by default as a PDF. So how in the world can student edit their work? Two options. Option one, the student goes to the pencil icon right over here, and that will take them into markup mode, where they can mark up the Google Classroom assignment using these tools on the bottom. So now I'm going to mark up this PDF using these tools. Right now we're on the pen tool, changing the thickness. That doesn't really help us. So I'm going to use the undo arrow at the top because I wanted a text box instead. To get a text box, we're going to click this A tool at the bottom. I'm going to click and drag to get a text box. And now I can type here. Here's the problem. What happens if you hide your keyboard, get out of your text box when you're typing? The students cannot get back into this text box. It's putting another text box on top of this one. So when they go to the select tool to try to grab that text box, they can grab it and move their text box around. They can even make their text box bigger or smaller, but they cannot add text to it. This layer's stuck there. So instead, the student would have to erase this and create another text box. So that using text boxes with the PDF markup version on Google Classroom on a mobile device is extremely tricky, but it does work. It's just very tricky when compared to using a computer. When the students are done, how do they turn this in? Well, there's a save button in the top right. It's grayed out, but it's still there. And when the students tap that save button, you'll notice it's going to save an edited version of this PDF. And then when that saves, there's going to be two copies of student work in Google Classroom. So now I'm going to X out of this because it said it was saved. Now notice there's the original and this edited PDF, the one that I've marked up. The teacher would see this one as well. Okay, so that's option one. That's not very friendly for students. Let's take a look at option two, how students can actually use the Google Slides or Google Doc app on their mobile device to edit their work. How would that work? I'm going to X out of this one. We don't need that anymore. 
do not open students do not open up in classroom the attachment that will only open it up as a PDF. So instead, tap the home button on your device, go to the Google app itself if you have it installed. And when you go to that Google app, sorry, I was already working on it. You're going to open up probably the most recent one. And now this is opened up in the app itself. You'll notice the toolbar is a little different at the top. So this is actually using the Google Slides app on my iPad. And I can click the plus sign here. And I'm going to add a text box. And then I can click and drag this text box around. And then I can actually use my keyboard to type in here. And how in the world can we save this? Well, I'm going to press the checkbox up here. We'll just pretend that I'm done with this example. How can I turn this document in? I'm going to do the checkbox again. And now I'm going to go back to Google Classroom. Let's open this up to see if it saved our changes. Yes, it did. This is what we typed in using the Google Classroom app. So there wasn't even a turn in button I needed to press when I was in the Google Slides app. Instead, I go back to Classroom open this up to check and then I'm simply going to press turn in right here to turn this in to my teacher. And now my teacher will have my slides. I could always unsubmit if I needed to. Listen, it's a very different experience using the mobile side of Google Classroom compared to the computer side of Google Classroom from a student. So teachers, just be aware of what you're sending out. I would recommend that the mobile version of Google Classroom is best used for, here's the mobile version, is best used for consuming content and using a computer or a Chromebook is best for those students creating or interacting with the content. I hope that helps. 